So for this next part, I would like to uh, invite up the uh, Renault Active team. Uh, that is with uh, Frilo de Kock, uh, who is with Daedalos Engineers, and with uh, Petrus uh, Tebrock, with the Vrije Universiteit of Brussels, a sociological researcher, as well as uh, Moritz L. Fed Fedkenhoyer with the uh, TU Darmstadt, also sociological researcher, and um, not, uh, not, <laughs> not least by any means, uh, Torbjörn Asm Asmussen, not Fasmussen, uh, with uh, Velux headquarters. Um, thank you so much to the team. I also want to uh, give proper credit to Yuri Minnen, who is also with the Rio Universität of Brussels, as well as Jens Christoffersen. So they have also been valuable colleagues in this process. Thank you. Okay, hello. Um, so we discovered for the thermal comfort, it's important, it's dependent on the weather, of course. And besides the weather, it's also, um, it's also dependent on the building itself and on the user. As an engineer, we have impact on how is the building performing, the envelope, the technical systems that we, that we foresee. But we have also seen that if the users don't open the windows and if they don't use the solar screens, the thermal comfort will not be okay. So that's a bit shortly what we will uh, see. So for the building system, what have we discovered? Um, actually, in the attic, there was a solar shading screen on the exterior at the southwest facade, but not at the northeast facade. Because it was social housing budget, we have skipped it because to keep in the budget. And we have seen that in May, during a visit at 10 o'clock in the morning, it was more than 50 degrees, the interior solar shading in the attic. So there was actually one heating element in the attic during the summer. So then we decided to just remove it and to have an exterior solar shading to solve that problem. So we intervened in the building system during the project. The next thing is that there is natural night ventilation to cool down the building, but because we didn't have any mosquito protection, also because of the budget, we've seen that the people don't use it because they don't want mosquito bites. So actually, the thermal comfort we have in the house is good, but it could have been better if they would have used the natural night ventilation. Um, maybe this is the most important of the building system, what we also have seen about the building system is we can see in the thermal comfort it is good, but during the hot spells, and last summer we have had three hot spells, we see that temperatures are too high. And then we discover that the temperature outside and inside, they, are go, they increase very hard during the day. And it's just because of the natural ventilation system that brings in all the hot air during the day. So then we decided that maybe it's better if you have a natural ventilation system C, that, it's uh, that the CO2 set points are temperature um, dependent. So when it's very cold outside, we maybe think indoor air quality is less of importance than the thermal comfort. During most part of the year, we can have a very good indoor air quality, and when it's too hot or too cold, we diminish the indoor air quality to have a better thermal comfort. If you have a system D, natural um, mechanical ventilation system with heat recovery, that's not the case because you have the heat recovery, you don't have to take care about it. And for the user behavior, maybe I just uh, pass uh, Pim. So my task together with Moritz and Juri was basically to see how would people use the system, how would they react to it, and are they happy with it? So we found out that they always said that they were very happy with the system. But where it became interesting for us was during uh, conversations, mainly with Friedel, who always said from, oh, why didn't they do this? I expect them to behave like this, but they don't do that, and they behave differently. Can you ask them why they do that? Uh, one of those examples is opening the windows to cool down. Um, during um, uh, winter, we had periods where uh, we, so the system would automatically open uh, uh, the windows due to high CO2 levels and the family uh, disabled this function because they were more occupied with just indoor thermal comfort. They would prefer having it warm over good CO2 levels. 
So sets points for natural ventilation during the night means, meant for them that, well, the windows would go open on moments that they would prefer not to go open. Uh, the same holds, for example, for the solar shading control system. There are two windows on, on one facade where there were automatic um, suns, sunscreens. And the family used those systems suboptimally. So one of those um, sunshades, sun blinds, were always closed due to privacy reasons. They feared that if the uh, um, sunscreens were down or open, that um, uh, criminals could see, oh yeah, the house looks like this or something inside, and they preferred for this reason to have it down, meaning that natural uh, sunlight that came in was always blocked. The uh, sun, um, uh, uh, the solar shading uh, in the kitchen, just to the right of the other one, had always to be up, according to the family, because they there wanted to have optimal ventilation. Out of habit, they often opened windows um, in order to ventilate while cooking, whereas they didn't prefer to, didn't want to use uh, the kitchen hood, for example. Um, when cooking, they saw uh, very often that ventilation was only suboptimal while the sun blinds or sun solar shading was down. So for that reason, they always preferred to have the sun uh, shading up there, for example. So it became uh, very clear to us that, well, comfort, as it is uh, explained often by technical, um, uh, so people involved in technical measuring, is not always like how the user would see uh, comfort. So comfort in terms of, of thermal comfort or uh, air quality is very often for the user, for the uh, inhabitants of the, uh, of, of the renovative house of a lower priority, whereas they would uh, well say that mosquito, preventing mosquito bites in summer would probably be the first priority over opening windows so that uh, we could have night cooling. Uh, prevention of burglary is th the moment where we saw that um, they pr wanted to not open the um, uh, uh, sun blinds in order to have natural light. So, yeah. So, this is Friedel's slide. Yeah, this is a graph which shows the days. So, we have four days. It starts with Sunday and then Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. And on the uh, i-axis, we have the temperature. And this graph shows during a warm summer week, we see with the blue dots the outdoor air temperature, which is like 20, 25 degrees during day. That's a warm summer period for our Belgium climate. And then actually, we expect almost the same temperatures for the staircase and the attic because both are in the attic, as we have seen by the picture of Sabine. We have also seen that in the attic, uh, the staircase has two Velux windows and the attic has two Velux windows. We expect a little higher temperature in the staircase because there, the warm air from uh, the ground floors and the first floor are evacuated by the stack effect through the, win through the attic window. But what, we've see, what we see on the picture is that for the attic, suddenly the temperature increases very high the first day. We, g we see a very high increase. That can only be the case because the solar shading was on that moment not on. So actually that shows that when there is no solar shading, it's very hot in that uh, room. We have seen it during, uh, we, have did a, we, have, we did a test period without occupants. We, uh, all windows were open, there was no ventilation and temperature in the house was very, very high. So actually with that we can see that, this, that the solar shading in the attic is uh, really important. But what we can also see at, at the moment that they open the windows, that the heat is evacuated very effectively. So the temperature drops down very fast again. So actually I think this graph shows that the importance of the solar shading in the house and also of the good natural ventilation. For the indoor air quality, we can say that the indoor air quality in the house is very good. If we look to the CO2 concentrations and the relative humidities, everything is very good. 
how, when the people didn't open the windows to have a good thermal comfort in the house, we can see that they opened the windows in order to have a good indoor air quality in terms uh, of when they are cooking and in when they are cleaning. So actually they sense, in a way, it's a demand control ventilation on CO2 and on relative humidity, and they sense that that demand control is not taken into account the air pollution from cooking and from cleaning, the others that it's coming with it. So at that moment, they open their windows and they interfere with the system, which is perfectly fine. We have seen that the natural ventilation system, if we want a natural ventilation system with a good thermal comfort, that it's important that it's demand controlled, that we don't have all the time the full speed uh, natural ventilation, and that there are temperature dependent set points, what I explained just before. Because it's also a little uh, test-up um, Renovective, we are working with the VLUX system and a um, system from Renson, and they both have to work together with each other, so you can imagine that there were some technical issues from time to time. And actually we learn a lot about the problems when it went wrong, because then you can see what is the importance of, why, of the actions that we have taken. So actually the hybrid ventilation have shown us that it's very robust, because at a moment when one system was didn't performing good, the other system could take it over and we actually didn't notice that something went wrong or the results of the indoor air quality stayed uh, good. So for the... Okay, that's maybe for Pim again. So halfway, about, uh, halfway in the project we saw that there were constantly discussions about what is the behavior we expected from the family and what is the behavior they actually show in the house. And so I always thought that people, like especially uh, Friedel, but also some people from Velux, had a very, of course, a knowledgeable view on your human behavior. They were always expecting people to like what we call instrumentally rational behavior based on knowledge. Okay, we know that CO2 level is too high in the attic. Why don't they open a window? That kind of behavior. And those discussions were going on and on. And at some point I thought, okay, we have to go back to one of the basic teachings in sociology. Max Weber is one of the two founding fathers in sociology and he came up in one of his, his monumental works with four different perspectives on human action, human behavior. The first one I already uh, explained to you, it's called instrumentally rational behavior based on knowledge. Why don't they open a window when CO2 levels are too high? This means, in fact, that you expect people to first have knowledge about CO2 levels. Two, that they care about living in low CO2 um, uh, rooms. And three, that they know how to adequately uh, behave in order to lower CO2 standards. That's not always the case with people. And that's not what we saw doing, uh, what the family did. So there are three other um, uh, forms of human action of which I, I can describe two. Uh, yeah, I'll ca I can describe three, but so there's one we didn't see with the family. It's the value rational or moral behavior. It's like, okay, I know it's too cold, but I care about the environment, so I prefer um, uh, taking another uh, pullover instead of uh, using the, um, the heating system. Effectual or emotional behavior is what we saw from time to time with the family. It's like the, the um, behavior I just discussed with putting down uh, the solar shading in order to prevent burglary, whereas most of us know that it wouldn't help preventing um, um, uh, burglary at all. Traditional or out of habit behavior is what we also saw from the family and where I spent a good deal um, uh, understanding this behavior from the family during the interviews. And for example, I spent half an hour at one interview asking them, why do you open a window? And then Kadia too, the mother of the family said, yeah, I don't know. And I said, yeah, but there has to be some reason. And she said, yeah, no, I don't know. And then she came up with a reason. And afterwards it made me, it became clear to me that the family was just providing an answer to stop stop me asking silly questions they couldn't provide an answer to. So those, th this behavior is typical, traditional or out of habit um, behavior. So 
Um, what does the uh, automation system uh, mean for the people? How do they behave using this system? Then it should be very clear that the family says, okay, it eases our mind. So we had this question, it's one of the questions from Moritz, which was really funny. And it was, do you feel controlled by the system or do you control the system? And the family says, yeah, it's a stupid question. We don't like it. We don't see a binary vision between in control and being controlled. They said, we feel control, uh, so we feel in control because the system controls the indoor environment for us. And they see this as very important for their mental well-being because especially they feel that they are now able to uh, provide their children a safe and healthy indoor living environment. That being said, it means that it's very important that the system allows own priority settings because what we saw the family was doing was basically when they weren't happy with something, they said, okay, yeah, I want the solar shading to be down, but the system lets it go up and down whenever it, it suits it, the system. And they just didn't like it. And they didn't know how to d directly you know, change it. So they said, okay, we're uh, canceling the whole system so th and then we can do it manually. But in the end, what, me what does it mean? It means that you only have a suboptimal um, uh, indoor climate, for example, or that you have only suboptimal uh, natural light. So that's why um, uh, the system should probably allow for uh, some kind of priority setting, and it should also allow uh, to give the um, um, uh, give the dwellers the uh, possibility to override the system, to say, okay, for example, the uh, solar shading in the kitchen who had to be up for ventilation reasons. It was an African family, so instead of a Belgian family cooking one hour a day, this family reported to uh, cook four, four and a half hours a day. And then solar shades going up and down was the most annoying thing uh, uh, for the mother in the house. So. For them, it would probably be an option to say, okay, we want to um, manually use the system for four and a half hours. And after four and a half hours, it should, in fact, return automatically to default settings. If you don't do that, you leave the system to the manual uh, position. And that's what happens with the family. And then you only create a, a suboptimal situation, even when the family doesn't care about ventilation purposes. So... Should I do this too? Or? So the main messages uh, from this project was that, well, experts and people from Velux are very often expecting instrumentally rational behavior, whereas the uh, dwellers, and not only this family, but probably all the dwellers, if you think about your own behavior, you should come up with a lot of examples yourself that people often just act out of habit or do it based on, on affective or emotional uh, argumentations. So if, if your, um, your view or your perception on what do I want to uh, reach uh, while controlling the indoor climate isn't in line with what the system does for you, it is very easy to say, okay, I'm uh, closing off the system and I use it on a manual uh, position instead of, so, you know, you looking for a system to, to improve the situation at a certain point. So from that perspective, it's uh, very important that they can override it, for example, by uh, still uh, being able to open windows themselves. So the two main learnings are this, uh, like this, allow an own priority setting into an automatic system so that, um, so that the system can have an uh, uh, additional impact on health of buildings without being um, uh, contradictory with the uh, priorities of the people. Thank you very much. Uh, hold on, I hear myself. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, but Thank you for uh, Sabine and the uh, Renovactive panel. I can try with your names, but I don't want to sort of put myself under embarrassment. Um, 
we have seen uh, a number of uh, important concepts already presented that are going towards this catalysis, this enhancing of this relationship between uh, people and buildings. We have spoken about comfort and behaviour. Uh, is there anything that uh, Tobin and Muritz would like to also add uh, to um, what has been said and, and, and the presentation? Is there something that uh, you would want before we, we open the, the, uh, the floor to the, to the audience? Yeah, um, I can I have to put just my remove my headset and then I have yeah. a small comment. Yeah, exactly. uh, I think um, uh, Pim's uh, last comment here with um, regarding the, the, the engineers, I'm, I'm an engineer myself, so I love spreadsheets and I love uh, when I do modeling of, of uh, homes, I set up specific patterns for the use of, of the building. But I think we engineers have to remember that the occupants of the home never do as we expect. They always do something else. Uh, and uh, we, we have to keep that in mind, that um, even though we think we know how people are going to react, they'll do something differently. And we've seen this not only in, in, in this Renovactive project, but also in, in many other demonstration projects that we've done in Velux. People are doing th things differently, and we have to make designs that are uh, able to, to uh, encompass this. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, regarding these naughty behaviors of, of the occupants, um, I have no idea of how much time we have because this starting at 2.15 and uh, ending 10 minutes earlier has sort of uh, a bit uh, uh, required a bit of reorganization. Uh, can we open the um, um, question to the floor? Do you have any questions that you want to ask. I, I have about 300 questions, but obviously I cannot monopolize the discussion. So is there any question from the floor? Yep. Hello, uh, my name is Tibor. Uh, I'm coming from Vilux and uh, we are working for uh, buildings for our own use. So, so uh, Vilux uh, circumstances. And uh, we are also uh, facing from time to time that uh, programming of uh, the smart buildings we have is uh, quite special. And uh, as you said, and uh, I also have hundreds of ex ex examples that how uh, our colleagues, own, own colleagues, they are overwriting the program with some uh, tricks and uh, with really special tricks. So. Is it exist some recipe for how to make uh, human behavior friendly programming of building? Well, that's quite a question. <laughs> Whoever wants to have a go with it, <laughs> please. So essentially the question is, is there a way of making sure that all of your technological control system can somehow, we're not saying predict, but uh, adjust to the effective needs of the users and try to understand effectively how much they would deviate from our um, modeled settings. I think it's extremely difficult making a system that, that is able to do this, but I think what is very important for all the systems is to keep the, the uh, occupants, the people in the homes, in a feeling of being in control. And I think that's the main, the most important thing. They have to feel that they are able to do the changes uh, of their home, of their office themselves. And not it's not a computer that's controlling how their solar shading should be or how their ventilation should be. A at least they should feel they're in control. They might not be, but they should have the feeling. Well, I think that that, that opens an important question. So please. I think we've clearly seen that um, if we are just uh, having a control system, you're looking into CO2 uh, concentration on thermal comfort, temperature, relative humidity and that kind of stuff. But actually the family is interested in or has a higher priority setting for other things. And we should take these other things also into account. And I don't think there are 
hundreds of priority settings. But if you want to have a good smart control system, I think you have to understand what are the primary needs of the people and that you can just make a control system that everybody can find him or herself in, that they can adjust in a way if they want to. But we've seen in the family here, they are not interested in setting the settings. They just want some intelligent system that takes over the control for them. So they, actually we didn't say it yet, but it was interesting. They didn't open the windows and when we asked them why, they just said us, yeah, but the system knows it better than, than we. So it was like 40 degrees in the attic, it was far too hot and outside it was just 20 degrees. And they didn't open the window, they could. I told them hundreds of times, you can open the window, it's allowed, you, are, you can do so. But still, the boy, he went sleeping on the ground floor because it was too hot in the attic room and he could just have opened the window. There was a little uh, technical issue with the system. It, it just like an experiment, it doesn't matter. But it shows that they really, they don't dare to interact with the system because they really believe that the system knows it better than they do. So I think it's a contradiction we have to take, or a threat of the smart control system, we have to take into account that people don't dare to interact anymore with their own house. So, Okay. Any other comments? I think that th these three concepts that, that have been presented, so on the one hand, control versus perception of, of control. And I would add, actually, other than control, override. So the capacity of knowing, yes, the system is doing something for me, the system is detecting, but hey, oh, I have the capacity of stopping it if I don't like it. I quite like uh, what you say then in terms of what we think is the comfort of people and what they actually perceive as comfort. For example, we may design a system on what the thermal comfort model is telling us, but for the people in, in their room, the comfort is not having mosquitoes or the comfort is not having people intrude in the house. And also the third element, I think, is adjustment and adaptation. So based on the capacity of overriding and knowing to be somehow in control, prioritizing over their needs, and whether there are all the needs that prevail, adjust our behavior in order to comply with it. So I think that these three concepts are actually some of those catalyzers that we may be looking at in the context of the thread of our, of our discussion. Okay, I stop. <laughs>